What's good, Steeler Nation? Welcome into the show. We got a great slate of Steelers rumors to cover today. First, Art Rooney. He had a big-time interview yesterday. The team owner gave some really interesting responses on stuff like Matt Canada, the team's off-season plan. We're going to be breaking down his answers today. And then also a bunch of mock drafts are starting to come out. I'm going to reveal what all the big names are saying the Steelers are going to take at number 17 overall. And then stick around to the end where we are going to be unveiling a special promotion where you could be on the show this weekend. So stay Stick around, it's going to be a great show, uh, but before we get into everything today, go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Uh, if this, the off-season's here, guys, and right now this is really our biggest time of year. We got NFL draft coverage, free agency coverage, right? We got breaking news coverage whenever, whenever the Steelers make a big move. So if you love the Pittsburgh Steelers and, you, and you're looking for one spot on YouTube to get all of your Steelers news and rumors content this off-season, go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. We're so close to 21,000 subscribers here on the channel. We're just over 200 away. So if you love the Steelers, you bleed black and gold, you want to help support the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. All right, so let's get into Art Rooney the second, who sat down uh, for an interview show here uh, on the radio yesterday and gave some very interesting answers. First, he talked about the Matt Canada decision and why the Steelers decided to bring him back for 2023. He said, to start over with a new offensive coordinator, you could just wind up back in the same situation again where the first half of the season, you're breaking in a new coordinator. We felt like there is enough there to build on that we can continue to keep that group together. And this argument does make logical sense, right? You bring in somebody new, Kenny Pickett has to get adjusted to that new playbook, and it, it, you could see why it could go wrong, right? Uh, so it makes logical sense to keep the same guy in there, keep the continuity, uh, and help out Kenny Pickett in that way. But then he also goes on to say later in the interview that, I think we need to improve on the passing game for sure. We need to see more yards after catch from our receivers. Obviously, we need to be better in the red zone. So here is the problem with his argument. He's keeping, he's keeping Matt Canada on the coaching staff as the offensive play caller. Him and Mike Tomlin are, right? But, you know, you're, you're saying that you're not liking the fact that you're not getting yak, right? Yards after the catch. You don't, you're not liking what you're seeing in the red zone. But newsflash art. That's the offensive coordinator. That's coaching, okay? Matt Canada runs as many, if not more, stop routes, which is like curl routes, comebacks, all these routes that just stop, right? More than anybody else in the National Football League. You look at the, be the best offenses in the National Football League today, there's a ton of crossing routes, a bunch of stuff that gets people on the run and gives them opportunities to make plays after the catch. Matt Canada's offense does that as little as just about any other offense in the National Football League. So if you want more yak, don't blame the receivers, okay? Don't do that, all right? It's not their fault. They're stopping, right? If you catch it, right? If you think about it, if you're a receiver and you're running a stop route, you catch it, you're getting tackled right away, right? Because you're stopping. It's called a stop route for a reason. So I, I just don't understand this reasoning. It makes logical sense, but I think from a schematic standpoint, getting rid of Canada, starting fresh with somebody that's actually going to produce the results that you want would have been the better decision. But I want to hear from you guys in the comments section. Did Pittsburgh make the right decision with Matt Canada this offseason? Type Y if you think yes, or type N if you think no. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So whenever you get an ad break here on the show, Go ahead, go to the comment section, find that pinned comment. It will be right there at the top and answer today's question. All right, so another thing that they talked about was off-season strategy. Uh, and Rooney had a pretty interesting answer uh, when it comes to this, in my opinion. He ended up saying, I think that the way we've done it, we give ourselves a chance to be competitive every year. And that means you have a chance to get into the tournament and have a chance to win it. So I'm not saying that we wouldn't work hard if we take some chances, if we had some something that we really could build on, but I don't see anything changing dramatically in that regard. So, uh, Translation, guys, the Steelers aren't going to make a lot of big moves this offseason. They're just not. They're, they're pretty much saying we're not going to go all in on like a Jalen Ramsey or a DeAndre Hopkins, you know, take on a huge contract. They want to build through the draft. They want to build in more of kind of like a sustainable kind of way. They don't want to go the Rams route where they win one Super Bowl and now the Rams are in big trouble heading into the next couple of years. They want a more sustainable model. So because of that, the Steelers, you know, their, their cap situation isn't great. They're paying a lot of big contracts. Uh, it's 
looking like they're going to try to build through the draft, so don't expect too many big moves this offseason unless something big happens like a De Deontay Johnson asking for a trade. Like Unless something like crazy like that happens, I wouldn't expect anything too major from the Pittsburgh Steelers. So coming up, I'm going to be revealing uh, what Art Rooney said about a potential new draft strategy for the Steelers in 2023. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor at Athletic Greens. I drink AG1 by Athletic Greens literally every day, and I love it. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted more sustained energy throughout my day and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I drink AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. AG1 combines all of your key health products in one convenient and tasty beverage. And in my line of work, guys, sometimes you have to put in long hours. So AG1 helps me feel energized and sharp so I can be at my best no matter how busy my schedule gets. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with 12 ounces of water and drink it first thing each morning. Done. Easy. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day, which you ask me, that's a pretty darn good deal, financially speaking. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients, which of course is a win-win for you and your health. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplemental routine, then Athletic Greens it will be giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That's athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Check it out now. The link is in the description and comment section of today's video. All right, so now let's talk one more, one more little thing here from Rooney, and he discusses a really interesting topic, which is that the Steelers' front office is starting to shift their draft strategy with new GM Omar Khan. This is what he had to say. I think we're seeing changes already in the way Omar and Andy are preparing for the draft, and I think those guys have their own ways of doing things. They're a little different from Kevin. Everybody's a little different, and certainly we'll see some changes in the approach to the draft. So the translation to this, uh, Omar Khan's a bit more of a new school kind of GM where he's going to be implementing more analytics and sabermetrics-based decision-making when it comes to evaluating draft prospects, right? Kevin and Mike Tomlin, before their partnership was mostly film study, eye test, that sort of stuff, seeing what they could see on film and then evaluating players that way. And of course, that's still going to be a part of the process. Mike Tomlin is a very see-it kind of person, uh, but Khan seems to be the type of person that's going to be coming in. He's going to be doing more stuff with the numbers. This is the new uh, statistical revolution that we've been seeing in all sports, uh, especially professional sports here over the last couple of years. We saw it with Moneyball. One of my favorite movies is Moneyball. Uh, that's, that, 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 that goes into like the, the, the beginnings of this whole thing, but now it's kind of gotten to the point where every single professional sport has an analytics department, and it seems like Khan is starting to bring that into the draft decision-making for the Steelers. Let me know in the comment section if you think that is a good idea and if analytics are good for the game of football or if you think they're a bad thing. Type G if you think analytics are a good thing for the game of football or type B if you think they are a bad thing. For me, I think that they're a good thing. I think it's, I think it's, it's good in terms of finding the right players, comparing players' stats to when other things happen, uh, and, and comparing them to comparable players in their conferences, at their positions, that sort of stuff. But the eye test is always going to play a certain role for me, right? I'm somebody that's a film junkie. I love watching film. And it's really, really important to take that side into it as well because I think that provides context that numbers just don't. I think, you, I think analytics are good, but they need to be in union with the other stuff that was cherished before. All right, so now let's get into some a mock draft roundup here of all the major guys that have put out mock drafts for the Steelers or just the NFL in general and see who they have the Steelers taking at number 17 overall. Let's take a look at this now. Mel Kuyper Jr. just released his 1.0 mock draft for 2023. He had the Steelers taking Joey Porter Jr., the cornerback out of Penn State. Bucky Brooks from NFL.com did the same. Daniel Jeremiah actually had the Steelers taking Osiris Torrance, the guard out of Florida. Very interesting there. 
Uh, and then Steelers Depot, their last uh, mock draft Monday had them taking Trenton Simpson. And then at PFF, Michael Renner, kind of the bigger name there, had them taking Cam Smith, cornerback out of South Carolina. Marcus Mosher, uh, a little bit of a lesser known name, had them taking Joey Porter Jr. as well. Dan Brugler, one of my favorite guys in draft media over at The Athletic, had them taking Devin Witherspoon. I like that. And then I, in my last mock draft last week that we did here on the channel, I had them taking Broderick Jones. If you want to check out my entire mock draft 2.0 from last week, go ahead and check out that video after you're done watching this one. So it seems like the experts right now are projecting that the top offensive tackle prospects, Paris Johnson Jr., Peter Skaronsky and Broderick Jones, they're not going to be available for the Steelers at 17. And because of that, you're seeing a lot of corner, right? Joey Porter Jr. was on there three times. Cam Smith showed up on there. Devin Witherspoon showed up on there. So it seems like the experts are projecting the Steelers to take cornerback. And the guy that showed up the most on this list was Joey Porter Jr. Of course, his dad, Joey Porter, great player for the Steelers. Uh, and Joey Porter Jr., he is an athletic freak, man. He, he graded much better this year than he did pri in prior years a grade of 73.2 and he's got all the tools and mentality that it takes to be an NFL lockdown cornerback one. I really think that this kid has a special kind of mentality. He is extremely physical, right? This guy is unblockable in the run game, right? No receiver can block this dude. He's massive. He is strong. He's got long limbs. Uh, he can really, uh, he's really explosive too, man. He's fast. He's big. Like he's got all the physical tools. He reminds me a lot of Kelly Ringo in that uh, department, right? He's got all the tools, but the big thing for him is, you know, he's still a bit raw. He's not a complete cornerback right now, technically speaking. He played a lot of off coverage at Penn State, right? I think he's got the frame and the body to be able to do whatever you want him to do in the NFL, but he's still got quite a bit of learning to do, and he's also a bit grabby. He gets penalized a lot, but at the end of the day, I would rather have a corner that plays physical, and you got to tell him to play less physical than somebody that doesn't like contact, that doesn't like to play physical, and telling him to go out and be more physical. I really think that Joey Porter Jr. is is the type of guy that can develop into a cornerback one in the National Football League. And really, when you talk about the top five cornerbacks in this year's draft class, you can shuffle these guys in whatever order you want based on what kind of your flavor is. Do you want somebody with the physical traits like Kelly Ringo or Joey Porter Jr.? Or do you want somebody that has a bit more technical refinement like a Devin Witherspoon or a Christian Gonzalez? For me, I like the kids that can come out and just play right away because you know that they can play. You're not taking too much of a risk, which is why I have Ringo and Porter Jr. towards the end of that list there in the top five. But really, these guys, if the Steelers drafted Joey Porter Jr., I wouldn't mind taking him. I, I think that because the Steelers are probably going to be keeping this cornerback room mostly together, I think they're going to keep Wallace. I think they're going to keep Witherspoon. I think that they're going to re-sign Sutton eventually. Uh, JPJ can come in right now and just be a developmental, rotational kind of guy. Learn from Akello. Learn from Levi. Right. Learn from Camp. Learn from those guys that have been in the league for a while and really learn how to be a pro. And then eventually, he can come in and be the cornerback one, locked down shut down guy that the Steelers have been looking for so I think it would be a pretty decent pick but uh so here's the here's the other part of this guys I want to talk about if the Steelers don't pick up a free agent left tackle are you willing to risk having one of these guys not fall to you at 17, right? Uh, Dan Moore Jr., in my opinion, he should move over to right tackle. I don't think he's a true left tackle in the National Football League. I think this is a position the Steelers should address. Chuck Wuma Okorafor would be a smart cut candidate, in my opinion. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see if the Steelers really try to lock down this left tackle spot in the draft. Because at 17th overall, those top three guys that we've been talking talking about on the show, right? Broderick Jones, Peter Skaronsky, and Paris Johnson Jr. Right now, the experts are not projecting them to make it to 17. So are the, are the Steelers really willing to risk that? So let me know in the comment section, what should the Steelers do at left tackle this offseason? Should they take a risk and, and address it in the draft? Should they go to free agency and get someone like Taylor Lewan on a team-friendly deal? Or should they stick with Dan Moore Jr. and run him back at left tackle for next season? Let me know in the comments section. I would probably go to free agency. If you could get Taylor Lewan for six, seven million dollars, I think that'd be a really, really good deal for the Steelers and it would take care of this problem for you. That's probably what I would do. All right, so now uh, there's a couple of different names that we haven't talked about 
on the show on the, on, in, in this week's mock draft roundup, right? Osiris Torrance, okay? Daniel Jeremiah had the Steelers taking this kid. He is a guard uh, at number 17 overall, which is very, very high for offensive guard because there's a lot of people that can play offensive guard in the league. It's a very low-value position overall in the draft, which is why you don't see many guards go this high. But Osiris Torrance, man, he... He's just fantastic, man. He's, he's a technical wonder. He's a great athlete. He's huge, 6'5", 347 pounds. I mean, this guy is really, really a good player. He never allowed a single sack in the SEC in his time in, in, in Florida. I mean, just wow. This kid is really, really good. I'm not sure if I'm in favor of going after a guard in the first round because you really want to try to hit your high-end positions, right? Cornerback, maybe wide receiver, right? Offensive tackle. That's probably the priority. But, you know, if all of your top guys at those positions are gone, I guess I wouldn't mind taking the best guard in this draft, hands down. And then another guy uh, that was mentioned, Trenton Simpson. Steelers Depot had the Steelers taking him number 17 overall. I think this is way too high for Trenton. I think this is I think Trent is probably the best athlete out of all the linebackers in this year's draft. 6'3", 240, can run, he's got long arms, uh, really decent player in that regard. But, you know, in pass protection, it's definitely, he's got holes in his game. Let's just put it that way, all right? I definitely don't think he's worth the 17th overall pick. If you're, if you're an inside linebacker prospect, to get taken in the first round, in my opinion, you got to be nearly a perfect prospect. That's not what Trenton Simpson is. I think he's a second round player, so I really don't agree with that move by Steelers Depot. Overall, this inside linebacker class is just not that good overall. All right, guys, you guys have been seeing my mock drafts on the show lately. I want to see yours. If you've got a mock draft that you want to share with me and you want to get it on the show, use hashtag mock in the comment section and then put it along with your Steelers mock draft. And if it's good enough, man, if it's something that I want to react to here on the show, we're going to put it on the show on Sunday. So go ahead and use hashtag mock, put your Steelers mock draft in there, uh, and you might get it on the show. I guess we'll see, guys. Uh, so here's a second reminder. If you made it to the end of the show here, I really appreciate you. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like I said before, we're going to have breaking news coverage for the Steelers every time they make a move. We talked a lot about their offseason plan today. Probably going to be a little bit more conservative, but every time the Steelers do something, we're going to have you covered. we got daily videos here on the channel, so make sure you turn on notifications so you know when those come out. I appreciate you, Steeler Nation. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.